So I got to ask, have you checked out InfoSec's new security awareness training series, WorkBytes, yet? And if that, if so, then I have to ask uh, further, are you more of a Captain Rufus in customer service, always ready to download a new treasure map without looking at who sent it to you? Or are you more like Melody Moonblossom in HR, trusting and accommodating to a fault? Or maybe you're more like Bone Slicer, the company's beloved yet forgetful security department veteran, always forgetting his key card and hoping you'll hold the door for him because you recognize his uh, admittedly scary face. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, then tune in today as I speak with InfoSec IQ's Director of Production, Steve Concatelli. Steve comes to us following years of working in the movie and TV industry, and his ability to create and craft a great story is at the core of what makes WorkBytes the most awarded security awareness series on the market. Uh, you can learn more about Steve and the team's ability to craft storylines with takeaways that stick, as well as the reasons why we create four different in different information delivery types to match the pace and time commitments of your workers. Maybe by the end, you'll know which of these fantastical characters I mentioned at the start is most like you. And if you look in the comments below, we will have a uh, personality quiz for you as well. Um, so kick back and enjoy a few engaging minutes with this cyber work hack. Welcome to a new episode of Cyberwork Hacks. The purpose of this spinoff of our Cyberwork podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you a quick, clear, and actionable solution or a new insight into how to utilize InfoSec products and training to achieve your work and career goals. Today's guest, Steve Concatelli, is InfoSec's own director of production for our InfoSec IQ platform. If you don't know, InfoSec IQ combines security awareness training, fish simulation, and many other types of fun and interactive modules for your employees. Now, in the past year, InfoSec IQ has introduced WorkBytes, a series of short, educational, and I have to say hilarious and fun films that teach essential security awareness info, whether it's using your company's VPN while on a work trip, not keeping your passwords on a sticky note on your work computer, or not holding key card locked doors open for strangers or even your coworkers. Uh, and the industry has let us know that there's a, they're effective too. Our content team is the most award-winning content team in cybersecurity. Uh, so these are topics that uh, all employees are reminded of over and over. And the best way to make them stick, I think, is to give them a story. Steve's experience in the Hollywood film industry has given him the ability to turn what could be dry educational exercises into compelling storytelling. And today, with the recent release of the next set of additions to our Work Bites episodes, we're going to talk about the decisions and actions Steve takes to get these done. So thanks for joining us today, Steve. Good to have you. Excellent. Thank you for that wonderful intro. It's good to be here. Much appreciated. So, um, yeah, first of all, how did you come to work with InfoSec IQ? Like I said in the industry, you know, info, mm -hmm. intro, your, your background isn't in cybersecurity or e-learning, but in the Hollywood film industry. So how did you find your way here? And what was it about this project that excited you? Sure. Uh, as a matter of fact, I came to InfoSec through uh, Los Angeles. I worked in the film yeah. and television industry for over 20 years, mm -hmm. doing uh, editing, producing, writing within the studio system. So that is trailers and commercials and television shows and all of the above. And then when uh, we decided it was time to move home, because we are Madison, Wisconsin natives, okay. uh, I was looking for a place to really put those storytelling skills to use. And InfoSec was the perfect place for me to come. Um, you know, I do have industry experience, but I also have, uh, I'm a computer science major, so I have coding okay. experience and I know how to speak with engineers. So InfoSec, you know, was a technical company, but it had this wonderfully creative team within it. And uh, it just felt like a perfect uh, spot for me to be in. And that was almost five years ago. I've been here ever since. Wow. Yeah, definitely the perfect, perfect uh, symbiosis. Oh, yeah. So I'm stoked to hear that. So uh, for folks who haven't tried or watched WorkBytes yet, can you give us a brief synopsis? Sure. Uh, WorkBytes is basically a workplace where anything can happen. It's our live action scripted comedy series of, and it's our new premiere series on the IQ platform. And basically, you know, it's, it's an office of the fantastic where you have vampires sitting in cubicles next to a, a pirate, a zombie, a fairy godmother, a, a, you know, evil robots. And basically, you know, anything can happen, but yet, even though it's this fantastic office, they still have to deal with the mundane cybersecurity issues mm -hmm. that plague every company. So it really is just this, you know, real problem solving and real uh, issues that we face in cybersecurity, but told in this fantastical way. Yeah. And dare I say, very funny way. Oh, yeah. No, no. The one that that, that I love is, is uh, so is Bone Slicer, he, he's just kind of a, uh, like a, a madman, but he, I, I know he sort of, 
he left his key card at home and he's like, he's trying to get someone to let him in. And yeah. they're like, no, come on, you got to get your key card. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's a perfect example where you have, it's very easy when you're talking about physical security, it's easy to say no to somebody who looks scary, you mm-hmm. know, because you easily perceive them as a threat, but it's the people who don't look scary. It's the people who look like delivery drivers mm-hmm. and people who, who, who ask politely to get in, who do not look like a threat. Those are the people who can be the biggest threat. And that's why WorkBytes really, really works well in this content because, you know, well, the person who's coming in looks like a, you know, like a a chainsaw horror type person. It's easy to say no to them, but they might not be the actual threat you have to worry about. So, yeah, it's it's really fun storytelling. Yeah, that's right. It turned out to be the UPS driver that we had to watch out for, wasn't yeah, exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> it was some. It was somebody else who Someone turned in a out to be the actual threat. package. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, well, that, that's that's perfectly filters my next question. As I mentioned in the intro, movie storytelling is obviously your passion and your vocation. So, uh, what were the fundamental tenets and techniques of this type of storytelling that you utilized to create work bites in this way? Oh, it's a good one. Well, actually, um, within our team, we really talk about the three E's, where we try to educate entertain and engage. Mm -hmm. And really all of the content that we build is focused around those three things because, you know, with, with, with content, you have to engage. You want them to be engaged with the content. The last thing you want is somebody just to hit play and walk away. Like we've all had that content and I'm very sensitive to that. So I try to make sure that our content is never like that. Um, You know, we try to entertain, obviously we want it to be funny. We want you, if you can laugh while you're also learning, that's important. And then also it's uh, entertain, educate. So education obviously is at the core of everything we do. You know, if you have training, that's just funny, but doesn't really educate. It's not real training. You're just, it's just a short film. So beneath the entertainment, there always has to be this fundamental level of education, of getting the point across, making sure that the actual learning moments stick. And so when you really try to balance all three of those, you get really, really solid, high quality, entertaining uh, you know, modules. And that's what we do. Yeah, I mean, at the at the risk of being a little uh, uh, grandiose or whatever, it sounds to me like uh, like the the original directives of like Sesame Street back in the sixties, kind of. where where you're you're really sitting down and saying the only way we get to these people is to speak to these kids on their own level and with the medium that they understand and appreciate, and so you get this this comedy, you get this very sort of meta comedy there's that there's that sort of like mockumentary vibe to it and everything like that people know that and by remembering a punchline it it also maybe helps you to sort of stick with the actual point of that particular punchline uh and keep it into your daily life so um i mean what considerations were were being made when trying to balance compelling storytelling while also focusing on making sure that these weren't just fun stories to watch i mean we basically just said that but like uh was there a lot of rewriting involved where it's like okay this is just fun but it's not really locking in or you know we got to pull back because it gets a little too in the weeds here what have you Yeah, there's always a creative process that you have to go through when you're trying to balance story elements, because really with every single module, we start with the key learning moments like, you know, what is the the key learning moment on this and say it's, you know, um, you, learning how to use uh, wi- public Wi-Fi safely if you use yes. it at all. You know, so we have this idea and then we create a storyline of which characters would naturally kind of fill that story. And then we start building out the dialogue of, again, keeping in our minds what the learning moments are and that's where it gets tricky because as we all know you're trying to hit like three or four very important learning moments within a module you know like you know don't log on to open wi-fi or use a vpn and these things Mm -hmm. and you're trying to put them in in a way where people hear it and understand and it's not just thrown away and so to do that in a way where you know the conversation that two characters might be having might be very very straightforward but it's against the background of this absurd and again the wi-fi one is 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 a classic example where you know a vampire calls our the it person at two in the morning and they're having this weird conversation where at the same time like i've had other uh people in it tell me that they've had that conversation for real at two in the morning two in the morning but it just happens to be a vampire yeah <laughs> so you know it's these it's these again the absurdity of these situations but the conversations themselves in our modules tend to be pretty straightforward and pretty on the button for how actual conversations can go. Um, and I, I answered a question and I don't even know if it was the question you started no, with. I'm absolutely. sorry. I started, I started no, absolutely. Talking. Cause well, what it makes me think of is, is, you know, when you're in a work situation and you're trying to create creative product, but also to a purpose, it's real easy to get 
like oh. like stuck into one lane or the other and or one rut or the other. It's like, well, we we've started working on this thing and we got to make sure that it like the logic works internally, but then you forget about this other part. And so you're, you're doing a very good job of like balancing the sort of the two plates at the same time and, and keeping them both spinning. And I think that's got to come in part from all your years of, of storytelling experience and different ways of presenting it. Oh, for sure. You know, making sure that every story has a beginning, middle end, that they actually have a narrative arc. And it's not mm-hmm. just kind of this thing where it's a setup, a punchline, a build and a, and a resolution, having all those important story elements, you know, whether it's a feature film, yep. whether it's an hour long television show or whether it's a four minute module, you still want to have all the story beats. So it feels like it is a complete story into itself. And so, yeah, we spend a lot of time there. And then we also spend a lot of time dealing with um balance of characters and and who we want and you know dei diversity equity and inclusion are a huge yes. part of our focus in writing the scripts yeah and you know making sure like who is representing which characters how are they represented even though they're they're characters of the fantastic you still want to keep in mind these real world ideas of who you are representing what positions yeah. are they in yeah. what are the positions of you know like managerial positions and how do they all relate to each other? Um, one topic we spend a lot of discussion about is microaggressions. You know, microaggressions yeah. are are very bad for training. But when a vampire acts like a vampire to a zombie, is it a microaggression or like, <laughs> or is he just being a vampire? And so you have you have these very interesting discussions. And and of course, the the best way that we work through them is we build scripts. And we really review them with all of our internal teams, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, the content team, we go to teams outside of content for Mm -hmm. these to get other people's eyes on them to really make sure like, okay, is the learning there? Is it funny? But also, what are the intangibles that we might not be seeing? You know, does this represent a workplace? Well, do you feel the characters are balanced? How how is it from a DEI perspective, you know, and really keeping all of those things in mind because they all matter. And when, you know, when admins look to, to really roll out our training in their companies, they're all looking at exactly those things. And like yes, it's, sure. and, and even tiny, tiny things um, of how one person can approach another person aggressively or funny or how do they relate it all matters. Mm-hmm. And so we really put a lot of time into our scripting process. And I imagine what, which of the archetypes is making the types of same mistakes or whatever is probably a consideration. It's, you know, it's it, different. It it, it's different if, you know, one, one person's extremely arrogant than if another person's extremely arrogant or, or, yeah. you know, self, self-assured of their own genius or whatever. <laughs> and well, it's funny you mentioned that because in the first season that we did, you know, we had a lot of the characters like the vampire, for example, is very grandiose, very mm-hmm. self-assured in a way that usually comes back to backfire on him. He's several yes. hundred years old. He's used to being right about everything. And he's got uh-huh. a hilariously, you know, a hilarious worldview. And he usually gets knocked down or peg or two for being wrong. But for the, even the last modules that we just did, some of the feedback we received internally and externally was, well, we'd like to see the team have more wins. We would like mm-hmm. to see these characters learn, grow, and apply the cybersecurity, yeah. uh, you know, like things. And so the ones that we just released last week have that training where the vampire who had been maybe been the butt of jokes in previous ones, he gets a huge win, you know, ah, in the work in the working remotely module, yeah. it's his home office and he gets this win that you really weren't expecting or like everything is really cyber secure. And it's that nice, like, Oh, they're yes. starting to really sink in and have these funny, unexpected wins. So, so yeah, that. even the characters are starting to grow. Yeah. We, I love it too. It, it's, it's neat to have these characters who are more than just like a two dimensional <laughs> vampire yeah, yeah, or zombie yeah. or fairy godmother. They're, you feel like they're people as absurd as that is to say, like, it's absurd yeah. to say like the no, pirate no, totally. is a fleshed out character, as, but, as we, much, but we're really trying as much as I love the Simpsons, you know, it, it, the fact that they never learn anything is part of the appeal of it, but it's not fun when you're, you're just watching people constantly run their heads into the wall it, <laughs> when, it, when, it, when, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, can you uh, talk a little bit about this next set of videos? Uh, what, what's, what's new in this new set? Uh, are there any new characters or can you like give me any? Teasers? There are. Yeah. Oh, sure. We we just released four new WorkBytes modules. They just okay. went into our library this week. And uh, yeah, they cover um, Internet of Things, working remotely, mm-hmm. mobile security, and BEC, business email compromise, a very important yeah. one for C-suite. And we did introduce uh, some new characters. We introduced uh, uh, a vampire hunter type character as a yeah. foil to the vampire. 
We have an evil IoT robot who makes his first appearance named Scum, the <laughs> sentient compliance and utility machine. He's a you know an IoT device gone amok in an office environment. Fabulous. And and beyond that, what we really try to do is to stretch the boundaries outside of a regular office because you know one thing with with most training and, and ours included is that you know these tend to be office focused modules so we tend to shoot them in kind of office settings and that's what they that's what they tend to be so for this series we wanted really wanted to break out of that mold so we're trying to get out of the office because cybersecurity is important wherever you are wherever you go wherever you work so you know they go to a restaurant they go at yep. they work at home they're out and about walking down the street you know, just to try to really vary it, to give it this sense of scope, scale. And, you know, again, like reality, we have to be cyber. You go to a coffee shop, yeah. put your phone down. No, you got to be cyber secure about that. So yep. uh, it makes it more relatable and honestly just makes it more fun. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I want to pivot from that to some practical aspects. What advice do you have for clients who are attempting to use InfoSec IQ with their employees and these these WorkBytes modules and everything else that we have to ensure that the materials we've created are the most beneficial and stick the best? Like, do you, oh. do you have any kind of implementation strategies? Um, yeah, implementation or other more other teams. I'm focused sure. on the creation, but I can talk about it from a content perspective. Is that yes. what we have done is our team has created kind of four quadrants of content. Mm -hmm. And we have really designed it that way on purpose. So that way, whatever your flavor of content that your organization needs, you can find it in our library. So we have we have core concepts, we have just the facts, we have needs known, we have work bites, and they each cover the same content, but in a slightly different style. Yeah. So we have, you know, we have live action, you know, it's kind of like the, the quadrant right here. You know, we have live yeah. action on this side, we've animated it on this side, we have humor, and then we have serious. And each one of those series lands in one of the four quadrants based mm -hmm. on what you need. So if you work for, let's say, like a large government organization, and you want very fundamental, kind of straightforward, serious, but animated, core concepts. If you want something live action and funny, you know, like your, your work uh, is a little bit more punchy. They like the humor. Hey, we have work bites, you know, or yep. if you have a lot of European uh, bits of your organization, you know, they tend to like just the facts because it's straightforward narrative mm -hmm. on screen, you know, very, very direct. So, you know, if you're looking to implement our training you really want to audition all four of our series and find the one that speaks to you because you know yeah. if you just if you do that you'll find the right one for your for your org. Yeah, uh, just just very quickly. I mean, that's great. I, but my next question was exactly about that. Can you oh. give me like a, just a pinpoint like version of what you would see with each of these core concepts? Need to know just the facts and work fights? Sure. Hopefully, you can have some kind of fancy graphic that does this, but I'll do it with yeah. my hands. So, like, so I would say if you have a, you know, in this quadrant up here, I won't, I'll just let me just speak it through. <laughs> so, if you're looking for animated, uh, but straightforward, we have core concepts. That is our fundamental foundational series where it's motion graphics that are done nicely, very professionally, very nice animations. But the presentation is meant to be very straightforward. It's not funny, yep. Yep. no jokes. It's the content that you want in the most compact way possible. Yep. Uh, they tend to be about five to seven minutes. Now, if you want animated but funny, that's when you go to our Need to Know series. That takes place in a funny, fantastical office with people. They tend to be very short, two to three minutes. So very, very short, very, very punchy, great jokes flying back and forth. You know, so that's that's our need to know. Yeah. And then on the live action side, if you prefer to see actual people instead of animated cartoons, great. If you want straightforward live action, that would be just the facts. That's where like Keytron Evans and other cybersecurity experts just talk straight to camera, oh, gotcha. okay. giving you, yeah, giving you like the most important things that you need to know. And I think that's probably our most popular and our most used series is just the facts because it just, you know, yeah. everything's under five minutes, in single topic, yeah. in and out, excellent coverage. Yep. And then, of course, if you want live action humorous. That's our new work bite series, which really covers the same topics, but, you know, in a humorous wrapper with some funny situations and again, under five minutes. And that's one of our big goals is we try to keep all of our training, regardless of series, five minutes or under core concepts gets a little thicker because you go into OWASP and some secondary topics, they can Got get it. a little yeah. wordy, but yeah, yep. but that's a general overview of the, of the four series we have. 
Okay, so as we wrap up today, I hate to end on the old what's next question, because I know when you have oh, like a man. big project that you finish, you know, the, you, you would like just to like luxuriate in that for five minutes. But I want to end with this instead. So whether uh, WorkBots or InfoSec IQ as a whole or any of these four series, what are some of your big goals or ambitions for the platform that you hope to realize in the future? Oh, man. Well, I, we have plans underway, so I can't get too into the details. Okay. I, I don't want to. I don't want to give too much away because they're still in flight. Well, but I will say that um, we do we do plan another round of work bites that we already started scripting. Uh, we're hoping to get those into the library in the next few months, and we've got some very very funny topics. Going to be introducing some new characters on top of that, so we're very much looking forward to that. And then um, what we really want to do through 2024 is expand our uh, our training, our topics. Uh, Role-based training is something that we're going to start developing more of and really kind of dive deep into that. And then beyond that, um, we got some fun things on the horizon, but I, I can't give them away. So all I can say is stay tuned. Yeah, watch the space for details, as they, as they say. Uh, all right. Well, Steve Concatelli, thank you so much for giving me this insider's view on work bites and more. This was so much fun. Oh, absolutely. It was my pleasure. I love talking about our content. So any chance I get, I'm happy to do it. Great. Well, we might we might have you back to sort of talk about the other three as well sometime. But uh, uh, for now, I will I will send you on your way. And to everyone listening and watching, thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this video and felt it helped you, please share it with your colleagues, forums, or on your social media accounts. And definitely subscribe to our podcast feed and our YouTube page. Just type in CyberWork InfoSec into any of them and you're on your way. And there's plenty more to come and we'll have some more uh, InfoSec folks talking about our products in addition to our, our usual hacks topic. So if you have any topics you want to cover, drop them in the comments below. Until then, see you next time. Thanks again, Steve. Hey, if you're worried about choosing the right cybersecurity career, click here to see the 12 most in-demand cybersecurity roles. I ask experts working in the field how to get hired and how to do the work of these security roles so you can choose your study with confidence. I'll see you there.